Hey, in this video I'll give you an overview of WebOS 22, show you its menus, settings and share a few tips along the way. All this will be presented on LG's 55C2 OLED TV. Let's get started. Last year we had WebOS 6, this year version 22. Why this big leap? Well, LG decided to synchronize WebOS version with model number, so officially it's WebOS 22. But if you go to TV management, TV information window, you will see officially still it's version WebOS 7, which makes sense. We had version 6 last year, this year version 7. Now if I press home button on the remote, you will see this full screen menu. This is the home menu, same that we had last year. Last year LG decided to do this big makeover to WebOS and actually most comments about it are negative because people preferred that old version that WebOS was famous for, which was not occupying the entire screen. This year the same, we have full screen experience and it's quite busy and it can be quite uh, difficult to find the information you need. Uh, however, thanks to this magic remote and shortcuts that you can assign, uh, you can basically skip this menu to open different apps, which I'll show you a bit later. But now we have this home menu just to show you uh, its layout. So top menu with weather, uh, some tips, then there are more blocks there with search, recent input and user profiles, which I'll come to in a bit, then trending now from different services, whether you are subscribed to that service or not, you will see this content. Then we have app list, which is the only customizable area here. You can basically arrange how you want these apps to be, in which position to put which one, you can delete the apps here. Then home dashboard, mobile connection, TV input, storage and so on in this line. Frequently viewed programs from antenna or satellite. Web browser, so these are uh, favorite pages and then most visited. Uh, now streaming, showing content from Prime Video or YouTube. And this is basically from your region it will show your recommendations because when I open my YouTube account, I will not see this kind of content recommended. Then sports alert, which is something we had also last year for different sports. New releases again from different services. You will see recommendations here and here you can go to the top or you can customize. Now let's see customization of this menu. So. You can either edit app list that I showed before. So if I press OK, you can basically take whichever app you want and you can move it here or there. You can also delete the app right here. And that's basically it. There is also intelligent edit, which will, uh, which will arrange apps depending on how often you open them. And then if I go back, let's see more customization options. The second one is edit contents list. Here you can just move the lines. So for example, frequently viewed programs, you, I can put it here or sports alert. Maybe it's, you know, you want to have it more to the top, but that's it. You cannot delete those lines. You cannot free up home menu. That's related to this main menu. The second menu, which I'll show you, is settings menu. And it's again very similar to what we had uh, in previous years. So if I press settings button on the remote, you will see here on the left different round icons. And they're basically showing you different options. What is good is that you can enter edit mode and you can move or delete them. Or you can also, 
for example, let me delete this one, you can add setting which you need to access more often. So for example, tracking speed of pointer or pointer size or automatic volume adjustment, let's put it here. And again, you can arrange it as you like. Pressing back will exit edit mode and then you can open whichever option you want. Let's go to all settings. All settings menu contains four groups, picture, sound, general and support. Related to picture menu, I'll cover this in my calibration videos. Uh, here you can adjust how the picture will look like, choose different presets. Sound, different uh, style for sound, uh, sound out, advanced settings and so on. If you are connecting TV to external audio device, then you can tweak what kind of format is coming and so on. You can also uh, connect Bluetooth devices through this section. General contains different options which I'll cover a bit later, but basically here you have all those tweaks uh, and to find TV information, uh, OLED care menu and so on, AI service and always ready, which I'll uh, present later. And finally we have support, software update, user guide, quick help and privacy and terms. And this concludes the menu. So we have home menu, we have that quick settings menu and we have full settings menu right here. One new feature that we have this year are user profiles and you can customize and add them here in this icon. Basically, uh, I created two accounts to show you. So basically, currently I'm with this LG user zero. Now let's switch to I'm user two. And basically when you log in, you can enjoy recommended contents and services. So let's do it. And then I press home menu. So same menu, but you see different recommended content for that account. And also app list can be customized for each account. And that's mainly what currently these profiles are offering. You can also control the TV with your voice. And in Magic Remote, there is a built-in microphone and you have LG's Assistant, Google Assistant and Amazon Alexa. But if I remove batteries from the remote, I can do this. Hi, LG. YouTube. Going to YouTube app. Hi LG. Netflix. Okay, I'll go to Netflix app. So you can see you can control the TV with without the remote. And if I press this middle button with the microphone. I recommend some content to watch. You'll see recommended content, but if you go to this microphone help, you will see different phrases you can use with LG's ThinkQ AI voice assistant. On Magic Remote, there are many custom video on demand buttons like Netflix, Prime Video, Disney Plus, Rakuten TV. So if I press Netflix, I'm in Netflix, Prime Video, I'm in Prime Video, Disney Plus, not yet available in Croatia, but coming soon. Rakuten TV. As you can see, you can quickly jump to these apps. But for example, like many of you, YouTube is my number one video on demand app. And you know, I want to access it without going to home menu. Well, I can do it. I just long press number one on the remote or actually it's number two and I'm in YouTube. So how did I do that? Well, I used quick access function. Basically when you open an app, for example, HBO Max and once it is loaded, if I long press 
Let's use number three on the remote. Do we want to add HBO Max to Quick Access 3? Yes. And then you will also see this window where you see which app is assigned to which number. You can edit that information there. Now let's talk about family settings. You know, screen time is very important, especially if you have young kids. You want to control how much they're watching the screen. So LG added family settings. Now if I go to settings right here to the menu and I open all settings. Then I go to general, family settings. A specific app will be opened just for this with usage limit setting, eye care mode, volume limit mode and screen time report. So let's see each usage limit setting. Here we need to enter password. Here you can enable this function and then say OK. Start time from this to this, repeat on offset and so on. So let's let's do it like this, for example, and then you enable it here. So you may access and watch TV for the limited time shown below. OK, let's go back. I care mode. Basically here you can reduce blue light with this button, but you have same function in the picture menu. And also if you follow my tips on how to adjust picture, you don't need to use this function. Volume limit mode. Maybe this volume up to 100 could be dangerous. Maybe your kids like to, you know, boost it to max. With this function, you are limiting to 60 instead of 100 just to limit this maximum volume. And you see when enabled, you will see this green dot. Finally, screen time report. Let's see. Here you see uh, usage time. So report for uh, usage time, but also which apps were used. Now I'm in this different user, which I'm not using that often. So there is not much information to be seen here. And yeah, that's also another thing coming back to user profiles. So each profile we ha will have their own screen time report. In addition to family settings, you can also lock certain apps. And to do that, you need to go to system, safety, and here uh, TV rating logs, program logs, application logs. For example, here I enter the password and then you see the list of installed apps and I can choose which apps will need a password in order to be opened. And that's it related to family options and safety. One function which is very important to me is to turn off the screen but keep audio coming from the TV like if you're listening to, to a TV show or, or listening to music, you can do it very quickly on LG TVs. I'll show you here. Let's press settings button. In this menu, let's enter edit mode, click on plus button and search for screen off. Once we have this icon, we can move it to the top position. So now next time you press settings button, you will see it at the top, you click and that's it. And you can still adjust volume. And then if you press any other button, you will be back to content and see the content on screen. One app which I like quite a bit is Art Gallery, which was updated on WebOS 22. So in addition to images, now we have also animations, for example, uh, the rainy season that you can download for free. And in addition to images, you have also sound, something relaxing. And Yes, it can act as a screensaver. 
In addition to art gallery, you can also play your own uh, photos or videos via built-in media player. But another feature which is quite hidden but very useful is always ready. Now to open it, we need to go to settings menu and this time I'll just long press this gear button. Go to general, always ready. Basically this function can be enabled or disabled here. If I enable it and turn off the screen, the app will be opened. Basically here, this is the animation from the beginning of this video. Here you can also select which music to play together with these beautiful images. But if I press right uh, button or any button actually, to you can choose between different sections. If you want to display a clock, you see there are four different clocks here. You want art pieces, no problem. Modern art, maybe masterpieces, meditation break, scenery. Movements, these are these animated uh, screensavers, re the rainy season, spring, sound of silhouette and bounce A. Moments. Now here, if you download Think app on your phone, then you can send photos or alternatively, you can copy photos to the USB drive, plug it in and display it also within this, this, within this app. Finally, sound palette. So different equalizers, very beautiful. Uh, they remind me of those screensavers on Sony PlayStation 3, which I enjoyed quite a bit. I would put music and just look at these beautiful images. Now, if we wait a few moments, this text will disappear and all you will see is this screensaver. Now, let's see if that's the truth. Maybe I need to play this music and then that will happen. Let's see. Yes, so we see it on top, but that will also disappear. Oh, okay. So you see, very, very nice. And then if you want to go back to the TV, you just press power button. But now if you press OK, go to the right, you have different options. And uh, basically that's it. Let's see this gear button. Oh, get notifications, slideshow speed, set time to turn on, connect, illumination sensor. Basically, yes, you can also adjust how bright or dim the screen is depending on how much light there is around the TV. And that's it related to always on and gallery functions. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. Let me know what you think about WebOS 22. Do you have some other tips to share? And I'll see you in my next video coming very soon. Bye.